there's been a lot of people industry-wise who have doubted me. I've read forums in the past, and they know I've read comments in the past, and a lot of people don't think that I work very hard, and a lot of people don't think that I have it in me, but if they saw what I go through, they'd know that, man, I want to win. It's not a hobby. In his first two years in the 250 class, Joey Savacci finished outside the top 10 in the Lucas Oil Pro Motocross Championship, failing to live up to the expectations that come with a life fully committed to racing. But those early setbacks have now provided a foundation of gratitude that has driven him into championship contention. Joey Savacci putting on a clinic right now, only a few corners away from going 1-1 on the day. Here he comes to take the checkered flag. Put your hands together for number 37, Joey Savacci! After two years in which the 250 class was dominated by Jeremy Martin, Savacci shocked the motocross industry at round one of the 2016 outdoor season by winning both motos in convincing fashion. The motivation is never a problem. We go 1-1 one, one and there's even more of a target on your back. You know, there's a lot of guys out there that don't want to see you win. We're out there fighting for a paycheck. When we put the helmet on the gate drops, it's uh, every man for himself. To go to Anktown and qualify fastest and then win both motos, it did a lot for his confidence. But in the back of his mind, he knows that on any given day, you know, he, he can win. If you're a second place guy, a third place guy today, whatever it is, it is. You know, it's like what Ricky said, long season, keep it together, stay up. Maximum points. Maximum points. By winning both motos at round one, Joey seemed to be on a level above the rest of the field, in part because all of the other top riders in the class were inconsistent with their finishes. Going into round two at Glen Helen, Savachi carried the red plate on his bike for the first time in the outdoors, with a large 15-point lead in the championship. Looking for Savachi's 16th place for your points leader after the end of lap one. Hey, the giant 15-point lead that Savachi had, that might all be gone. Oh, guys. This is not a championship performance. I He's got to go back to the pits and figure something out. Jeremy Martin looking to win the second moto here at Glen Helen, and he does. So the champ is back on top. At the end of the moto, like sitting there going through my mind, what the hell just happened? Bad qualifying, bad starts. We got our teeth kicked in more or less. Don't need me to tell you, but you're old like <laughs> Went from 15 points in the lead to an hour and third. Glenn Allen it was surreal to me because how do you come from a weekend where you pretty much dominate, go 1-1, one, one, and then you struggle that bad? We lost the red plate, we lost a huge point lead. Man, is this a bad dream here, or what's going on here? Doubt kind of crept into my mind after that, you know? Like, how much of the first round was a fluke? Savachi left Glen Helen and went home to Tallahassee, Florida, where he lives and trains at Ricky Carmichael's facility, known as The Farm. With a summer climate that has average temperatures of 92 degrees and 96% humidity, the only riders who embrace training at the farm are those who believe that the only way to reduce pain on race day is to experience a greater degree of pain during the week. It is the track where Jeannie Carmichael held her son Ricky accountable while he built the greatest motocross career of all time. My structure was tenfold to what anybody else's was. I mean, everything was documented, lap after lap, lap time, training, diet. That's what I had to do to beat the best. And that's the way it should be. A lot of sponsors spending a lot of money to see their brands out there. Go, oh, come on! It's work. Uh, you could ask Ryan Villapoto, you could ask Dungey. Are they enjoying it and having a blast during the week? Probably not. But winning, it definitely helps. Faster! Had a long week back here at the farm after Glen Helen, and it was hell. Jeannie and Ricky weren't too pumped, and I wasn't pumped either one of those deals where you get the feeling of winning and anything short of that sucks. Joey has a lot of respect for Ricky and he gets along really good with Jeannie. They're trying to do for him like how Ricky did it and he's a sponge to that. He likes that. It's improved his results and his career. He's improved in the last year like tremendously. Besides training at the farm, the biggest change in Joey's racing program in the last two years is the Pro Circuit modified Kawasaki dirt bike on which Joey has staked his racing career. 
While there is a physical battle with exhaustion that must be waged daily at the farm, it is worthwhile for Joey if it can keep him on the race team of his dreams. I'm different than my competitors because the majority of the dudes winning right now in my class, they've had a signed professional deal since they were amateur. Cooper, you know, he signed the star deal before he went pro. Martin, he signed his deal before he went pro. Macy's had a deal since he was on an 85. I don't think there's anyone that's struggled to find a ride as much as I have. There was a point in time where I was searching for a ride, nothing was secure. And at that point in time, there's a lot of doubt. Doubt in my program, there's doubt in me, and how come this guy just got a ride, but I can't? And when Mitch called me, like, hey, you know, I want you to ride for me, it was like automatic boost in confidence. I caught his eye, and that's pretty special. I must be doing something right. It could have been the worst contract on the table, and I would have taken it without a doubt. Savachi came into round three at Thunder Valley, Colorado, needing to reassert himself as a contender in the championship race. And with the second fastest qualifying lap time in the field, it appeared the grueling week in Florida was beneficial. This is all I've wanted my whole life. Since I was little, it's like Mitch Payton's Pro Circuit, Kawasaki, 2 I think it's sick, it's the coolest bike. It's the fastest bike and it was something that like clicks and every time you get on a dirt bike, it's like, man, I'm on this bike for a reason. I can win and he believes in me. It's that feeling you get that you never want to lose. He has certainly done it. Should have won the first moto, was leading it, crashed. Held on for second. Joey Savacci answers the questions. He wins the overall at Lakewood and takes the points lead back. He sacrificed his whole life for this, and whatever a normal kid does growing up to put all that on hold and to work as hard as he's worked for this long, it's really pretty gratifying for me to see it come together for him. What's happening now for him, I want nothing more than to see that continue. Why Joey? Why did I put my trust in him? He got an opportunity when he signed with Mitch Payton, and uh, he's won two out of the first three MX Nationals. Pretty dominant in those two out of the three races as well. So he's rising to the occasion, and he's responding. Let's get a good one. Just run your laps. Those guys are no better than you. Getting the rate plate back is awesome, but it's not going to do me any good at the end of the season if we don't keep it. I want it for one round, and that's the last round. Got to go into High Point confident and got to execute. 250 class racing at High Point Raceway. So many riders in this class. This is the kind of track that suits me. Someone <laughs> is going to establish themselves here at this first moto. The battle of the red plate. Points leader. Who wants to really lead this thing? 